A lot of people like to give Blizzard a hard time about some of the balancing decisions they make, and as much as I can understand where that frustration comes from, more than directing my anger at the balance department, sometimes I'm wondering how certain things even got beyond the design stages. In the vein of more is more, Blizzard is doubling down on their strategy of making all the heroes obsolete by stuffing new heroes to the brim with damage, mobility and utility. Of course, being of the near extinct race of Zenyatta means you can probably guess that I'm not very happy about that. While I will admit that using Transcendence to chase down my prey is part of my core playstyle, I would be hard pressed to classify that as mobility. And as such, any new hero added to the game that features any increase in mobility whatsoever, just like Doomfist, makes my life much more difficult. I mean, it's annoying enough to have another angle of attack that you can always get poked from as a support. But it gets much worse when an innocent poke turns into a one-shot combo that doesn't even give you enough time to say what the heck just happened. Was I standing still in an attempt of baiting them to do that just so I have a clip for my video in which I can complain about that being possible? Maybe I was. But even if we ignore scripted events, Echo is capable capable of doing many a thing that is very annoying if you are playing a tank or support. My personal favorite part is when the flying DPS hero with the mobility of a god suddenly gets the health pull of a tank just to drop on you like the Kool-Aid man. No amount of skill shots and 5D underwater chests can save you from the wrath of a player that literally doesn't care about whether or not they are eliminated because hey, they got a second life anyway. Very cool. Naturally, considering how annoying Echo can be, it is ever the more satisfying when you land a sleep dart on her just to watch your Reinhardt turn this stupid robot into a MacBook Air. It's so thin you can barely tell it's there. But honestly, it isn't just Echo that gave me a hard time, because among all the amazing characters that Blizzard has blessed us with, there is one hero that has the ability to turn otherwise perfectly functioning mechanics into a problem. And that hero is Mercy. Mercy can take characters you wouldn't think are much of an issue, much less OP, and thanks to the power of holding M2 suddenly turned them into an issue. No character should hold the power to one-tap squishies on cooldown, and while heroes like Doomfist and Widowmaker her strongly disagree with that notion, Mercy too seems to have a bit of an itch for chaos. Don't get me wrong, sometimes Mercy players are a true blessing. When no one else on my team has any interest in stopping a Doomfist from spawn camping me, it is usually Mercy that comes back to assist me in my desire to play the video game. You think anyone else cares about me sleep darting the tracer that is poking in our backline? No, of course not! But support players have to stick together and as such, I appreciate the Wing Goddess for blessing me with at least one competent teammate. And it is that very reason that makes me look meant the fact that she is the one that allows Echo to go from a general nuisance to a bonafide problem. Leading up to our story match, my number one reason for losing matches has indeed been the Mecho combo that is occupying the airspace to rain destruction and Roadhogs from the sky. But no more! This match will be different! I refuse to let this flying trash can dumpster me any longer! I will forsake my beloved low mobility heroes for the sake of victory and by Jeff, I will no longer make for a free elimination. Our story today takes place on Li Jiang Tower. Now granted, we haven't gotten a new hero in Overwatch for quite some time, which is something I personally consider more of a blessing than a curse, but needless to say that modern problems require modern solutions. And while this may have been day two of Echo's release, of course my giga brain had already formulated a suitable strategy to deal with the latest addition to the roster. The game started off with a bit of a petty squabble between the enemy Lucio and me, but I know that y'all aren't here to watch me beef it up with another Lucio, you're here to see some Echo gameplay. But Trinity disagreed. It doesn't take a Grandmaster to tell that losing a player so early usually makes for a bad omen. Willfully unimpressed by our point presence, the enemy team decide to march on forward and elaborate on their advantage. But Alex and I were on the same page, realizing quickly that we couldn't let Trinity do as they please. I decided to rotate around the objective to make a run for the opposing sniper, Wombo comboing here with the help of my Hammond, but sadly, our attempted assassination was foiled by the perfect utilization of the mouse one button sides of the enemy mercy. Whatever am I to do in the face of such overwhelming game sense? Well, in the words of my personal deity, we go again. Our second and run for the backline succeeded in taking Trinity out, but it came at the cost of the objective as well as most of our teammates. And while the enemy Echo clearly saw me sneaking around the backline, they made no effort to stop me from backcapping. In fact, they completely forgot about me and was it not for the tanks moving in to stop me, I would have actually succeeded in seizing control of the objective. I reckon my Hammond nudging the frontline to look backwards might have also been a crucial factor in the decision making. But let's ignore Echo's lapse in judgement due to what I can only assume was a memory leak and witness me playing ring around the rosy with the entirety of the enemy team, allowing my own comrades to freely regroup and make their way towards the front line. At first it seemed like we might be able to come back strong from our initial loss as I served a free elimination in form of an Ana to my Winston, but as was expected, the enemy team did not take too kindly to us diving their main healer. Our resident scientist found himself in a bit of a pickle as the opposing Echo went for a big brain play of camping the mega health pack and ultimately, our hope for success would crumble much like Winston's hope of getting healed. Between Echo zipping away at the speed of sound, that is a very cool ability by the way, I love how she can just like radically change 
your trajectory to make yourself borderline impossible to hit. That That's just beautiful game design right there. I'm sure a character with a slim hitbox was in dire need of such an ability. Great job, Blizzard. And Mercy being as easy to grab a hold of as wet soap, I started getting really annoyed with my inability of confirming an elimination. At this point, spotting the chance for a free elimination in form of a lonely Widowmaker was just the confidence boost I needed. I gracefully dodged the enemy Reinhardt's charge and was convinced that, together with my Winston, we would be able to take this objective. Which makes it ever the more unfortunate that he decided to leap off the point in the exact moment that I dropped the beat. Sure, not an ideal way of initiating our comeback, but not to be discouraged we successfully regrouped and pushed the enemies back to whence they came from. I do have to admit though that at this point, I really felt like I was the only player in the lobby even aware that capturing the objective was ultimately the point of the game. An exercise in spawn camping was quickly turned around as the enemy Zarya fired off her graviton surge, leaving our echo with no protection. Thankfully, I was on the other side of that wall and while my team was getting decimated, I could wall right away with no care in the world. Our Genji made a valiant effort by screaming some random gibberish in Japanese, but at the end of the day, the carbon copy made in China would come out ahead and we had no choice but to surrender control. Remember when I said that I was the only one in the lobby that was aware of this being an objective-based game mode? Yeah, I take that back because my Hammond, Jeff bless his soul, was doing Hammond things on the objective and I kid you not, the enemy team simply watched him in awe. Naturally, the sweaty Widowmaker Smurf was the only one making a bonafide effort of stopping him. As much as this might look like fooling around, Alex has been storing the point long enough for some of the high mobility heroes in our team to be able to return and assist in prolonging the inevitable. If I was somebody who mainly plays DPS, I would probably put a lot of emphasis on the fact that I've obtained both gold eliminations and healing while playing Lucio, but instead, I want to highlight the clown show that was still taking place on the objective. While Alex backed out for some momentary healing, our Winston traded places to further stall the objective before doing the exact same thing. I I have to hand it to them. Once they realized that there was an objective, they were doing a brilliant job of keeping it. I decided to go backline hunting and annoy Trinity some more, still unable to confirm an elimination thanks to Mercy's superior game sense. I eventually grew tired of getting cheated out of what was supposed to be a rightful elimination, so I checked in on the objective to assist my team in their stalling attempts. When the enemy Reinhardt finally put an end to our shenanigans by charging Alex off the objective, I knew that I had to be the one to pick up the torch. But sadly, a sleep dart would put a wrench in my plan and I found myself eliminated only moments later. Though still drastically low on HP, Alex made use of my sacrifice to continue stalling even at the cost of his ultimate. Of course he would eventually fall prey to the enemies as well, but considering our edge and mobility, we could get back to the point in no time at all. And this Lucio had one thing in mind. Revenge. Despite our best efforts, Winston and I did not manage to attack the point again to continue the clown show, but now that we're here anyway, we engaged in a brawl with the enemy team to weaken them for our team's arrival. Including styling on their Reinhardt that tried to shatter us. I Hightailed it straight into the backline to finally bring justice upon Trinity, who cheated death way too often already. The fight began to look really scrappy as overtime was about to hit, and the only thing keeping our team in the game was my beat drop. Reinvigorated by a second chance to make up for our mistakes, our team took it to the objective to fight to their last breath, but unfortunately, we were unable to overcome our lack in numbers. So far, we have been staying alive not by getting more eliminations, but by outsmarting the enemies via use of mobility and stalling. And this overtime would be no different. As the last man alive, it was my duty to extend the fight long enough for my Genji to arrive and turn the tide with a massive nanoblade. He denied the resurrection by dashing into Mercy Fall by a swift elimination on their honor. Seeing their numbers dwindle, the enemy Roadhog that tried so hard to get me off the point desperately used his ultimate just to eventually fall to the frog he previously tried to cook. The point was ours and there was no force powerful enough to make us surrender it. We invested too much to give up now, pushing forward and keeping the enemy team away so that even if we can't eliminate them, we sure as heck can stop them from contesting it. One faithful boop on the Winston was enough to close out the round with us being the ones that last stood on the point. And with that, we put ourselves in a very good position. While my gold medals were painting a very clear picture of us losing significantly in the eliminations department, through wits and smart use of our resources we managed to overcome and ultimately prevail. With that said, our Echo player got a wee bit jealous over the fact that the opposing Echo had the privilege of a pocket healer asking if they could also be granted such treatment. But I assured them that learning to play Echo the hard way would ultimately provide the flames necessary to forge them into a formidable player. Thankfully, they believed that nonsense. It is time for round two, so let's find out if my team can cheese its way into another victory or if the enemy team comes back swinging. Victory. Wait, what? No, that isn't right. What the heck happened this round? Okay, I accidentally booped my Zarya off the map before beat dropping. I teabagged the enemy Mercy for pocketing Echo. A bit of post-match trash talking. 
And that's it? They just gave up? Okay, guys, trust me when I say that. I, more than anyone else, wish that every single stories episode had an epic conclusion, but I don't control what the enemies do. I guess the morale of today's video is that sometimes you win unexpectedly? Jeez, I don't know. Just hit that stupid like button, please. My livelihood depends on it. The end. A bit of an abrupt ending for this video, but I hope you still enjoyed it, and if you did, why not consider subscribing to the channel and ringing the bell to make sure you don't miss out on the next video. Also, what has your experience with Echo been so far? Been having a great time, or are you getting just as annoyed as me? I'd love to hear from you guys down in the comment section below. And shout out to all the Mercy players looking after the second support. Anyway, thank you everybody so much for watching, I hope you have a fantastic day, and until next time, peace.